Hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, lately I've been getting quite a few requests to do a video on gambling moves. And uh, it's really interesting stuff, so I'll probably end up doing uh, a few videos. This one right here is going to be on cold stacking, which is one of the more practical methods for cheating at cards. Now, um, well, a quick disclaimer, uh, you shouldn't cheat at cards, obviously. It's, it's dangerous, it's wrong. Uh, just an overall bad idea. Okay, that's not what this video is about. This is for demonstration purposes only. Okay, now that being said, I do think that for magicians, it's very appropriate to learn this stuff because oftentimes when you're out there, you're performing, you're going to get comments like, uh, you know, I would never want to play cards with you and things of that nature. And that's just a perfect segue into uh, doing some kind of gambling demonstration. And uh, if you do it right, a gambling demo can be a really strong routine. It's very entertaining, you know, it demonstrates a high level of skill. And uh, you can also use it as an opportunity to educate your audience because I think a lot of people are genuinely curious about the possibilities um, of cheating, you know. And, um, and what the risks are. You know, I know casinos have a lockdown on this thing now, but in, uh, in home games, you know, if you put someone who can handle a deck of cards in that environment, you know, it's game over. The other guys don't have a chance. So it's good to let people know, uh, you know, what's possible and maybe a few things to look out for so that they can protect themselves. Now, um, let's, let's get on with the move. So cold stacking is uh, the, the basic idea is you're locating high value cards and then positioning them in locations so that when the deck is legitimately dealt out those cards fall to you or to whomever the target is okay and it's called uh, cold stacking because it uses a cold deck an unprepared deck just any shuffle deck of cards and you can do it so I'll give you uh, just a quick idea of what something like that would look like and uh, I'll, I'll attempt to do some cold stacking here. So keep in mind that cold stacking is not used to uh, give yourself an unbeatable hand. It's only used to give yourself an edge over the opponents. Okay, so uh, more likely than not, you're going to end up having the highest starting hand if, if you're good at cold stacking. Uh, but it does not guarantee a win by any means. So let's say uh, there's four people playing. We can just use these props to represent those people. Um, so a few more shuffles maybe. Let's see. And uh, I should have stacked a pretty decent hand. And then I guess a few cuts. Uh, well, you probably wouldn't do a cut like that at the card table. Maybe something like this. All right. So I think I, uh, it was an ace and a queen, I believe. So there's the ace and there's the queen. That's cold stacking right there. So let's let's break that down a bit. Before you attempt to learn this, you need to be very comfortable with the tabled riffle shuffle, which is this right here. If you can't shuffle a deck of cards like this yet, I did make a video teaching it, uh, so I'll link to it. So go ahead and learn that, and then you can come back to this video. But you need to be able to do many consecutive riffle shuffles in a row without any hesitation. And then, uh, and then the stacking part comes next. All right, so here's what's happening. In the process of shuffling, you are glimpsing cards and you're basically scouting for high value. So the way this works is when you shuffle, if you bend the left-hand cards uh, up enough, you can see the top cards. I guess um, in the beginning, you should just focus on the very top card just to make it easy. So you're going to glimpse the very top card of the left-hand pack. So in this case, it's an 8. I don't really like that. So, uh, sorry for the distraction. Okay, so I don't really like that there. So I'm going to finish the shuffle, and I cut that to the right. So now I have a brand new card on the left-hand side that I can glimpse. It's a 3. I don't like it. Now, keep in mind that when I... Shuffling, this is exaggerated. You would never shuffle this high. Um, I'm just doing that so that the camera can see. Normally it would be something like this. Um, but you get the idea. So it's a five. I don't like it. Now, this it's kind of a luck 
I mean, yeah, I mean, it's kind of a lucky, and there's a queen. Sometimes you're going to hit high value cards very quickly, and then other times it's going to take, you know, five, six, seven shuffles. But if you're good at riffle shuffling, and you can do a lot of them in a row, then no matter what, you should be able to get a, a strong hand in a, uh, uh, in, a, in a decent amount of time. So there's a queen. I like that queen. I, I want to keep that. So I finish the shuffle, and, uh, and I, I do the same thing again. There's a nine, I don't really like it. You wanna make sure that you shuffle that queen back to the top. You wanna to preserve that there. Okay, so you keep going until you hit one other high card. There's a king, I like it. All right, so you finish the shuffle, making sure that you have both high value cards on top. Okay? Once you've done that, now comes the actual stacking part of the move. So. Now what we need to do is get those cards in the position so that when the cards are dealt out, they fall to, to whomever you're trying to get them to. Uh, for this first demonstration, uh, let's say I want to get them to fall to me. And there's four people playing. So the way that I would do that is, uh, again, you do it in the process of shuffling. So you shuffle and you want to finish off your right hand cards first, but you're going to hang on to three cards. Okay, then you finish the left hand shuffle but you hang on to one card. Then you deposit those three cards in between, and then you finish the shuffle. So you're putting three random and different cards in between the two value cards. That's step number one. Step number two is uh, same thing again. You finish the right-hand side first, but you hang on to three cards. Then you deposit all three on top. Okay, And you want to make sure that you don't disturb your top card stock because that's your stack right there. So you need to, it's like a five, or, you know, it's a five card block but you might want to go more just to be safe. This is exaggerated. That's too much of a block, but you, you get the point. Okay, and then you finish the shuffle. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Um, it does require a bit of a sense of the touch to hang on to a particular amount of cards. Three cards isn't bad, but as you increase the number of players, let's say you're playing with five, six players, then you need to start holding, or you need to start um, holding back stacks of four cards, five cards. And then, you know, that's where the practice comes in. Uh, but in this case, I, I did it for four players, so now if I deal the cards out, those high-value cards are going to land to me. Okay, now when you do this stacking process, um, eventually you'll, you'll want to be able to do it in a way so that you don't have to look at the deck as you're retaining those cards. Okay, um, You want to be able to just feel three cards or four cards or however many you're using. When you first start out, then of course, you know, you, it's okay to look to verify that you got the right number of cards, but eventually um, you, you, you want to be able to do it by touch because you don't want to be concentrating on the shuffling process too much. That's suspicious, right? One other variation that we can talk about is, um, let's just take two high value cards out. You can do that stacking process in one shuffle instead of two. Okay, and of course this is a, a, a bit more advanced, but the way that that would work is when you do the shuffle, you hang on to six cards. Okay, so I believe that's six right there. You shuffle off, you hold on to one card here, you deposit three, shuffle one, deposit three. And that way the stacking is done in just one shuffle. Okay. Um, okay, the other scenario that I want to talk about is if you don't want the cards to land to you, but you want them to land to a partner. Because it's generally considered bad practice to give yourself the edge if you're the dealer, because that arouses suspicion. So you would normally want to work with a partner. Let's say this guy right here is my partner. He's sitting in the third position. And so the way that this would work is, the first step is the same. You're gonna deposit three cards in between the two high value cards. But for the second shuffle, now you're only gonna deposit two cards on top, because there's only two cards preceding, or two players preceding him. All right, so essentially the same thing, just uh, you need to change the, the number of cards that you're stacking. Oh, actually it's going to this guy, so. All right, so that's cold stacking for you right there. Uh, stacking is a very dense subject. There's a lot that goes into it. This is just scratching the surface, really. Uh, once you get to uh, more, uh, more number of players, then it gets significantly harder. Um, so if you're playing with, like, let's say you're playing with six people, then you would need to stack, or you would need to be able to feel five cards. Okay, but okay, one thing um, I should mention here is 
in that case I missed by one. I only got four cards. It's okay. You finish the shuffle, and then all you need to do is shuffle one card in between the two value cards, and then you move on to step two where you deposit five on top. In that case, I think I got four again. So then you just shuffle one more on top. And now I've stacked for a six player game. So play around with that. You know, it's it's really fun to practice. It's, it's cool stuff. And um, it's a very realistic way of cheating at cards. You know, I, you know oftentimes in gambling demonstrations, people do really over the top things. Um, but this is this is how, like if I had to cheat in a game of cards, this is how I would do it. I would cold stack it. So I hope you enjoy that video. Uh, I'll make some more in the future about gambling demonstrations and gambling moves. And uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.